was over. Well, Bob Brown of ABC America can finally tell us what happened. Father Goose is a 54-year-old Canadian sculptor named Bill Lishman, a man who believed that using an ultralight aircraft, he could somehow lead in flight an actual migration of geese south out of Canada. You're high, you're high, go around. But what audacity to think you could join a masterpiece of nature and share even a wing stroke of its world. They always go long. It's amazing, they've got some method of learning the ground as, as they go over. I thought, boy, we could carry that into another realm, and, and that's where we're at now. It began the moment these young goslings hatched from eggs collected under Canadian wildlife permits and placed in an incubator. Because of a natural phenomenon called imprinting, birds believe the first moving object they see is their parent. So as they peck their way out of the egg and open their eyes in the nursery, there's Bill Lishman. To them, he's Father Goose. From his first group of goslings in 1986, Lishman, often with his daughter Carmen by his side, has raised three generations like a father, running down Purple Hill, carrying a tape recorder that accustoms the geese very early in life to the sound of an ultralight engine. A lot of the family got involved. Carmen had five geese that she'd run around with these little goslings following after her. And uh, it, the amount of dedication is quite amazing. Just the hours and hours that are spent every day. As the goslings grew, so did his own children so did his dream. And finally came the day we witnessed last October 19th. Lishman and his friend Joe Duff took off from Purple Hill, and in one breathtaking moment, these geese, the third generation he had raised, formed up behind Father Goose and followed the call to go south. The most difficult part in my head right now is getting across Lake Ontario because we have to fly about three hours and uh, we were concerned that the geese wouldn't last that long to start with and there's always that nagging doubt that the engine might quit on you. There was also a point to this romance between machinery and instinct. If Lishman could successfully lead such a migration, then possibly some endangered species could be taught the natural migratory routes their ancestors had long since forgotten. If this works, then we can use it on rare birds like the trumpeter swan and particularly uh, the hooping crane, which is very endangered, and show them a safe migration route that they don't have to do by chance. A scientist at Airly Center, Virginia, Dr. Bill Sladen, had offered his bird sanctuary as a destination for Lishman's geese. And they flew for six days over the cold waters of Lake Ontario above the changing autumn foliage of New York and Pennsylvania. And what a day it was, October 25th, 1993, when they landed at their winter home. Lishman planned to return in the spring to lead them back, and that's where we left them. But guess what? On a spring morning in April, they simply disappeared. We didn't know where they were, and uh, we didn't know whether they were headed home or whether they were just uh, gone off with other geese. That was bad news until two weeks later, when Bill Lishman looked out just before sundown and saw the answer to his question. They were home. When we found they were home, boy, that was marvelous. It, it really worked, it was the crowning thing. For the sake of the experiment, uh, that meant we only have to fly birds one way, and obviously they learn it. Twelve of the 15 geese that had survived the winter at Airlie Center returned, positively identified by the wildlife bands placed on their necks. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. You're free birds. They were free, but they went straight back to their old pond on Purple Hill. As for Father Goose, he's already making plans to try to lead a future migration of sandhill cranes but not before he takes one more flight of geese to Virginia. So even as we went yesterday to see the returning veterans, we saw as well the beginnings of a new cycle of life and another journey. It's a long way to walk to Virginia. You'll have to learn to fly.